Matt Hancock has denied allegations made by Dominic Cummings that he's a liar and has blamed him for the toxic culture inside Number 10 during the pandemic. The former health secretary who sensationally quit after breaking lockdown rules himself by kissing his aide in his parliamentary office has been giving evidence to the COVID inquiry today. How could, to a significant extent, important government advisers and officials have concluded that the Secretary of State for Health in the more of this public health crisis, in the more of the beast, was a liar? Well, I was not. You will note that there's no evidence from anybody who I worked with in the department or the health system who supported that, uh, those false allegations. Um, and indeed, where there have been specifics attached to any of those allegations, I've gone through them and I'd be very happy to answer questions on any of them. Um, and Joining me in the studio now is Talk TV Chief Political Commentator Peter Carl, Welcome to Hi. Peter. And down the line, we're joined by Alex Crowley, former advisor to Boris Johnson. Thanks, yeah. Alex, very much. So when, when he's asked, you know, how could it be that you've been accused of being a liar, Peter? What is he supposed to or alleged to have lied about? Obviously, he denies having lied. Mm -hmm. What are the lies that it's suggested that he told? Well, Dominic Cummings certainly has levelled a lot of those allegations against him. We heard from uh, Michael Gove earlier in the week that he really didn't want to get into it particularly. But there are other people who have certainly said this about Mama Hancock. Trust was at a very low point on a whole manner of things, certainly uh, in terms of when meetings were held, what was said in those meetings, whether Matt Hancock should be chairing Cobra or not. And essentially, uh, Mr Hancock has said today that Dominic Cummings is the liar and that he had a power grab at various points. He alleges that Mr Cummings said that uh, decisions needed, didn't need to go through Boris Johnson, which would have placed a huge amount of power in an advisor's uh, uh, sort of um, bailiwick. So there's a lot here. There's a lot in this, really. The other central bit of this is that Matt Hancock says that he was pushing for a lockdown earlier. He says that the lockdown should have happened three weeks prior to when it did. But really, the we're getting into a lot again of the who said what to whom. Also, care homes, very, very interesting point here. We heard yesterday that the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Jenny Harries, was the person who essentially said it's all right to discharge people back into care homes. This idea of a protective ring around, homes, uh, around uh, care homes was clearly nonsense. No. And Matt Hancock was talking about that as well today, I think. And, and, and is, he, is he owning any responsibility for what happened, which is, of course, that patients with COVID got discharged into old age homes and infected other people, and they were the frailest and most vulnerable people in society. And there are people listening right now and watching mm, yeah. whose parents, elderly parents and relatives, passed away because of this. Yeah. You know, is, is he saying it, it was OK? Is he saying he didn't want that to happen? What's he saying? Well, certainly he uh, apologised at the start of the very... Before he gave evidence the, the, the first time, this is the second time that he has given evidence to the inquiry because they've moved on in terms of what they're looking at. But really, that bombshell... Uh, uh, email I would say yesterday from Jenny Harries mm -hmm. was really the bit that put this front and centre and um, Matt Hancock essentially saying that he is uh, acting on advice from various people but really what he tried to do today I think was put the uh, health department against number 10 right. and really say that uh, certainly in regard to the, the lying allegations that no one in the health department actually alleged that he was lying. It was always people in number 10, especially Dominic Cummings. All right, let me bring Alex Crowley into all of this. Alex, you know, I had Isabel Oakeshott, our international editor in the studio yesterday. She's the person, as people will know, who co-wrote the book with uh, Matt Hancock about what went on in, in, I was going to say it was called Journal of the Plague Year, but we know it wasn't. It was called the Pandemic, Pandemic Diary. Diary. Absolutely very similar idea. Um, and she's also the person who, as we know, uh, exposed the contents of lots of his emails to the Daily Telegraph. Now, she was saying, um, this kind of um, uh, fodder at the at the inquiry, you know, who said what, who was in control, what Boris Johnson really thought or didn't think, who was vacillating, who was power grabbing, who was chairing Cobra, is all completely irrelevant because should there be another pandemic, those particular individuals with their flaws and their foibles won't be anywhere near the place. So it really doesn't matter whose personality grated with whose or who should have listened to whom. Those are not lessons that we need to learn. And therefore, all of that is a complete waste of the inquiry's time. I wonder what you think of that. I think it's certainly true to say that whilst it might be interesting to find out who sent what message to whom and what personality clashes there were, et cetera. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's particularly useful. One of the things I thought was most interesting out of the evidence that we heard today 
was this, what I see as the central problem of the government response to COVID-19, which was it had a uh, it had a preparedness plan based on a, a bird flu, effectively, that was drawn up in 2011 that essentially became the default response from the system when the novel coronavirus first started emerging in China. We heard lots of talk today about how everyone was looking at China at, at the beginning of 2020 and wondering how bad it was going to be and having to kind of almost guess as to what the response should be. And Matt Hancock now says, well, you know, with hindsight, I would have locked down or advised lockdown three weeks earlier. But most of the evidence shows that the whole system of government was basically geared towards a plan that was essentially a sort of let it rip plan, uh, to, to put it bluntly. Uh, and obviously, it took a huge amount of effort to, to change that course of direction. And I think probably the, 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 the inquiry will eventually conclude that, that that turnaround should have come earlier. These are the questions that we need to look into. Yes. How is our system of government prepared for the next one? And crucially, how can it respond quickly to changing events? That was the main story that I took out of today, was mm. things were changing on, a, on an almost hourly basis at points during this and the system of government couldn't keep up with it. Peter Caldwell, can you see a way in which the system of government could be changed in order to be able to keep up with it? Is it obvious to you where the structure should be altered? Well, certainly a government by WhatsApp group isn't uh, something that was a good way to run the country. No. We had uh, evidence today from Matt Hancock saying that Dominic Cummings didn't like COBRA, the emergency committee, in Downing Street, he said he didn't like that because there were too many people talking, uh, that he didn't have a clear sort of chain of command where Dominic Cummings was in control rather than Boris Johnson. So certainly a lot of this will be to do with the style of the leader, but there should also be a process and a structure. And that's, I think, what, you know, we hear a lot of these who said what to whom, uh, internal rivalry, who's a liar, who's not kind of stuff. And we might think this is all tittle-tattle, but it, it, it is to a degree, but it's also people at the very top of this country making life and death decisions. So what Heather Hallett, the uh, chairwoman of the inquiry, will have to do is wade through all that and come up with recommendations in terms of how things should change. I think it's very clear so far that there weren't chains of command that worked correctly. I think it's very clear so far that their personality clashes were far too big a deal in terms of how things worked. And there should be a very clear way in which the civil service and political appointees work together that just it wasn't the case during what happened during COVID.